right, there just ain't much to say at this point. We've gone through everything on selecting a load. We picked out our powder, our brass, our bullet, our primers, went through all the details. And I think we've got a, just a really outstanding cartridge here to try out. Now we just got to do our load testing and find out if one of these powder charges is going to meet our accuracy goals for this rifle and this project and at least take care of the our first goal for the project. Well, hey, I, I can't wait to get started, so let's get started. We're going to start off with our lowest powder charge and one of the things I want to see also are we going to get all the jump that I was getting with the XTR featherweight. I don't think we are. I'm not expecting it because this is a half pound heavier rifle. But that's one thing I really want to find out. So let's go ahead and commence with the load testing and see what we get. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of little holes in that paper that I don't think they're what we're after. But the rifle shot exceptionally well. It was smooth. So, we're off to a good start. And now it's just a matter of finding the right load. Okay, not exactly what we were looking for, but it's a start, and it was actually a good one. The rifle was extremely smooth shooting it, and that was one of the things I was really curious about. And what I said before, it might have sounded really stupid, me buying a, a rifle almost identical to one I already had, in the, chambered in the same cartridge, just to see if it was different. It's different. All right, so we've already learned something. Near as I can tell, that's the difference a half a pound can make. We'll get into that more later. Right now, though, let's just focus on getting this one to shoot. Okay, and we have some work to do. And most of you know this, but for any of you that you haven't really had to deal with dialing a rifle in, well, it can be frustrating. You go to our daunting. There we go. That's a good word. You go to the range, and you're just thinking, okay, this is going to drive tax. I put in all this work, getting it just perfect, and you're shooting three-inch groups, and it's like, oh, no, what do I do now? All right, well, that's what we're going to talk about. We're, we're going to take a look at what we potentially got going on here, and we're going to come up to game plan. Okay, so first thing we 
potentially have going on here. It could be that this 1 in 10 rate of twist on this barrel is just not going to stabilize these heavier 120 grain bullets. It's possible. And the reason we're finishing this up here, which worked out good anyway, but someone else pulled up to the range while I was wrapping up that last shot group, and he just happened to have had a Winchester Model 70 chambered in 257 Roberts there to shoot that day. And if I'd have been thinking, I should have interviewed him if he'd have been willing because he was a very nice guy and extremely knowledgeable. Okay, well, he had a custom barrel on his just so that he could shoot these heavier bullets. And one of the things he did is he got his custom barrel with a 1 in 9 rate of twist instead of, instead of the standard 1 in 10. Okay, so that's one of our potential issues. Maybe it's never going to shoot the heavier 120 grain bullets and it's not because of the weight it's because of the length but when you add weight to a bullet it gets longer these bullets might just be too long for this twist rate okay that's a possibility all right another issue that it possibly could be and this is something that i thought was really smart that he did well let's go over here to the whiteboard okay we got our standard cartridge case all right, maybe mine's not very standard, but you get the idea. So then we have our bore. Okay, so this is our barrel. We got our lands that put the spin on the bullet. The distance from where your lands start to the end of the case. That's a fixed distance. There's Nothing we can do about this. And there's variations from rifle to rifle. This area here, in your chamber, it's going to stop right here at the end of the case, right at the mouth. This distance here, this is your throat. This is going to vary from chamber to chamber, rifle to rifle, but there's going to be a certain range that's, that's there. Okay, well, we can't do anything about any of that. What we can control is how deep we seat our bullet. Okay, so the bullet's going to come out, and then at, at a certain point on the ogive of the bullet, that's where it's going to make contact with these lands as it, once we fire the shot. So we have a distance here. All right, clearance from that point to where the lands start and we hear people talk about uh, free space or chasing the lands, all that stuff. This is, that's what they're talking about. Okay, For myself, that, that distance there, I like to be around 23 thousandths if I can. So we, we can move the bullet up and down to dial it in so that it's the right distance off the lens. The thing is that when we start doing that, okay, with a really long bullet, we have to push it deeper into the case to get this distance. Right, so that puts us down here. Well, when we start getting that bullet down into the case, that's generally not good. It doesn't do us any favors on accuracy. Plus, it starts eating into our powder capacity. So if we've got a lot of bullet down here, we can't hold as much powder in the case. And again, it just doesn't do any favors on accuracy either. On the opposite extreme, the really light bullets, the, they're much shorter for any particular cartridge. So with those, we can run into problems of them being too short. And for instance, if we try to maintain that distance, they end up here with not near enough bullet in the neck of the case to, for it to really grip the bullet. All right, so then we might have to, the really light ones, we have to push them further down into the case so that we end up with a larger gap here. I just, we have to just to be able to grip the bullet properly. 
Okay, what that gentleman at the range did, which was really smart, was he had his throat cut deeper than a standard throat for 257 Roberts. So instead of it being here, his is up here. Right. Well, that meant he could push the bullet up, and instead of the those heavy, long bullets being down in the case, he slides them up, and that puts them right where they should be. Okay, that, that was pretty smart. And he did confirm my thinking on getting much better penetration with the heavier bullets. He said he had noticed he got much better penetration on game with the 120 grain bullets. Noticeably more penetration than even with the 110 grains. He said he was really amazed at the difference it made. So that confirmed my thinking on that, which I thought was pretty good. And just to expand on this, the, the whole point of the 6.5 Creedmoor, okay, what they did with the 6.5 Creedmoor, or 30 TC, that's the case that it's based off of, okay, rather than making the throat deeper so that they could shoot those heavier bullets, which they could have, instead of doing that, they made the shoulders of the case further back. So instead of the shoulders being up here, they put them down here and then made a long neck, a longer neck on the case. And to maintain their powder capacity, they made the case wider. Okay, so that, that, that lost distance this way as far as the case and powder capacity made it wider to compensate. And then they could load the long bullets and still end up right where they want to be instead of getting down into the case. Whole purpose of that cartridge. And they, they could have like could have did exactly what that guy did, made the throat deeper, same results. And not knocking on the 6.5 Creedmoor, it's just anything we do is give and take. All right, so if you're going to do this, well, you're still further away from where those lands start. So if you wanted to shoot the really light, 6.5 bullets, you're going to run into the issues with the short bullets because now you're going to be a long ways away from those lands. Not many people are shooting the light bullets, so therefore it's probably not an issue for most. But if you wanted, if you wanted to, you're going to be, you're going to have a lot of jump, and that's what that another thing they call that's jump. All right, so the further that point on the O-Drive gets away from where it actually makes contact with the lands, the more jump you have. And so just a safety note here, you never want to load up a bullet so that the O-Drive is actually touching the lands. You get a huge pressure spike when it goes off when you do that. You want some clearance here. I shoot for 23 thousandths if I can. You can go under that a little bit, but yeah, you start touching those lands, and bench rest shooters, there are some bench rest shooters, they used to do that, I'm sure some still do, they got more consistency with it starting out with the bullet touching the lands, but they were shooting custom loads that they had seriously put a lot of time and effort into working up because of those pressure spikes. All right, so for us normal people, normal hunting, normal shooting, normal loads, we have to have a gap there, something. So anyway, now let's look at it. what else we got going on. Okay, that bullet being deeper into the case than I would like, and this bullet is deeper into this case than I would like, isn't necessarily a problem. It's just a potential issue, and maybe it just makes the loads more sensitive you really don't do yourself any favors accuracy-wise, but that doesn't mean it can't shoot accurately. Right. And I thought what that gentleman did was having the deeper throat and then also getting the faster twist rate on the, his custom barrel. I thought that's really smart as far as he built his rifle specifically to shoot the heavier 117, 120 grain bullets. And Keep in mind, most rifles are, are built to handle a range of bullet weights. That's where to get the versatility from. Right. 
with a custom rifle he built his for a specific bullet weight. So he's probably going to be able to get the heavier bullets to shoot accurately a lot easier than like with us where we're, the, we're on the extreme of what this particular setup can handle. I doesn't mean it can't handle it though. I just thought, I was impressed with what he did there. Okay, another potential issue or issues. I noticed at the range, I could see the barrel channel was off out of alignment just a little bit on this rifle. Well, I pulled out the old trusty dollar bill, in this case, $10 bill, just to check to see if we were hitting anything. And sure enough, right here at this sling stud, we're making contact with the barrel. Okay, that's not doing us any favors at all on accuracy. None. And it's, it's not really tight. I mean, we can get through there. But right at that spot, it's definitely hitting something. Barely touching. All right, well, that, that could throw our harmonics out of whack. And anyway, I'm telling what we can see from that. So that's something we're going to need to fix. All right, another potential problem. This is a new rifle. It came with this scope on it. Okay, and it's VX2. I love the VX2 loopholes. I don't know that this is a good scope, though. We, it could be a scope issue. I, I'm really not thinking it is. I'm just saying it's in terms of possibilities right now. Possible issues. The scope could be loose. All right, now I've checked it, and it feels really solid. So I don't think that's a problem. We'll kind of roll that out for now. All right, so we got a few things going on here. And really what we got is multiple variables. Okay, and, I, and in an ideal world, when, when you have multiple variables, if you were going to test to figure out what's going on with any system, you would test one variable at a time and then go back and check it. And then that way, you would know exactly, okay, this was my cause. I fixed this one thing, it fixed my problems, this was the issue. All right, that would be ideal. The problem is that takes a lot of time. And in an extremely complex system, and this is, this is fairly straightforward and simple here, an extremely complex system with many, many, many variables, we never know how those variables are gonna interact with each other, which, that can be a nightmare solving a problem like that. Something like this, though, ideally we would just do a single variable adjustment and then go check. All right, in this case, with all the potential things we have going on, we would be looking at four or five trips to the range. All right, so single variable, you know, trying this to, to see. We would load up bullets just like same load. I'd put a new scope on here, go to the range and check it. All right, if nothing changed, okay, we know the scope's not the problem. Then I would sand down the barrel channel, make sure we had clearance right there, eliminate that, go to the range, check it. If nothing changed, then, okay, we go on to the next one. All right, try a different powder, change our load. If that didn't change anything, then go to the bullet drop down on weight, which is what I don't want to do. I want to shoot the heavier bullets, but that could be a factor. Okay, so we got a lot of variables, and it would take a lot of trips and a lot of things to change them one at a time. I think what we're going to do, I think our plan on this one is going to be go ahead and just swap the scope out. Right, so we can eliminate that right off. I don't think it's the scope, but I, I, I've got a red field I'll slap on here. And go ahead and on the barrel, go ahead and sand that down in the channel at the sling stud, get that clearance. That could definitely be contributing. All right, so that's two changes there. When I loaded up my rounds for this, just the trip this morning, okay, I loaded up five extra cartridges for zero one, and I, I generally do that. Okay. I think what we're going to do though, we're going to load up some new rounds using the Sierra Game Kings, change our load, and 
test those. But we're also going to shoot these five, five extras here that I have loaded. I didn't need them. The scope was zeroed. We'll, or it's close. We were on paper. All right, we'll shoot these five. And if we see a dramatic improvement in the group size, we'll know our problem was either the scope or contacting here on the sling stud or the, in the barrel channel. Okay, if we get the same results after making these changes with these five, then it's probably in the load. Okay, so then we try the Sierras. We'll have those loaded up for doing our testing. If we get a dramatic improvement with those, we'll, we'll know that it just didn't like this load for whatever reason. Maybe it didn't like the bullet. Maybe, I don't think the powder's a problem. I noticed we had really low standard deviations on our velocity, which means we just didn't get much variation in our velocity, which is a really wonderful thing. Generally, when you see very low variations in velocity from shot to shot to shot, that's generally a, a sign you've got a really good load there. Right? And we had low standard deviation. So I think we're going to stick with the powder, stick with the primer, and then just change up the bullet, see what we get. And like I said, try these five out. And it did these change after making these changes. That should tell us something. So we've got a game plan, and we'll get out here sometime this week, and we'll get this changes made that we talked about to this, and get some more cartridges loaded up, and after that, get back to the range and see what we got, and go from there. And something I did want to mention, um, I didn't really clarify this in the first video, I don't think, but when I talked about the XTR featherweight, and it, and it just jumping and me getting horrible groups. That's not necessarily any fault of the rifle. That's the fault of the shooter. Me. I think when we get into the lighter rifles, it just requires more skills to shoot them accurately. And I, I just don't have the skills necessary to get the groups I want with the heavier bullets in that rifle. And when I say recoil, again, it, it, it doesn't hurt. It comes back, and then it just bounces everywhere. And y'all will get a chance to see that at the range in the future. But so yeah, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm saying anything about about the XTR featherweight. As a matter of fact, it's it being a half a pound lighter. It, it is a featherweight. It's what it's supposed to be a lightweight rifle. So adding a half a pound to this one to make it easier for me to shoot is not necessarily a good thing. And you can feel a little bit of difference between them. And when you really feel the difference is when you pick up a standard weight rifle and that XTR featherweight, and you really notice the difference in it, how much lighter it is. Right, so I wanted to throw that out. And some of you have commented that You've got XTR featherweights that it doesn't do that, and they're just tack drivers, or you know people that do have them, and they're tack drivers without that issue. I believe you. I mean, seriously, I honestly straight up believe you. I just don't know if there's any difference between those featherweights and mine, or you're shooting them different. Um, I don't know. Maybe you've got better shooting technique. All right, very possible. Um, one thing I can say, I've seen where a lot of people on YouTube have said with rifles that want to just jump everywhere, that they'll put their hand up here and hold the rifle down, and then it'll shoot accurately when they're at the bench. Okay, I'm convinced that would make a difference on that XTR, but that's not what I want to do. And... There are some cartridges that they're just going to kick like a mule and you have to do that. I don't doubt that a bit in a lightweight rifle. All right, but the 257 Roberts is not one of those cartridges. It's not one of the heavy recoiling cartridges. Okay, and then maybe holding the rifle on the forend while you're shooting it. You know, that takes all of that out. All right, well, I don't want to have to do that. 
I want to be, and this is me being stubborn. In the field, that's how I'm going to shoot the rifle, so that's how I, you know, should probably shoot it at the bench. But at the bench, when I'm load testing, I want to rely on the rest, and I want to take me as much out of the equation of variables as possible. And I believe that with proper shooting technique and skill, with that XTR, that I can get really good groups out of the heavier bullets with it, if the one in 10 will stabilize those bullets. Okay, and all the accuracy problems I had with it were a lot more than just not being able to stabilize the bullets, if, if that's even the case. All right, now if it won't stabilize them, no amount of skill in the world is going to make up for that. All right, so anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. And, but that's where we're at, and God bless, and I will see y'all sometime this week when we get that done.